Wait, how the... Another house in Mondstadt? What are we doing in my house? Your house? This is your house? My, how unexpected. I heard Lady Magistus lived a modest life. But this abode... Look at the labels on these books on the ground. Only one of its kind? 990,000 mora? Hey, that's super expensive! There are so many expensive-looking hardcovers over here. So this is what an astrologist's room looks like. The rooms are exquisitely designed. This place must be very expensive. Hey, I'm just occasionally out of Mora, that's all. I never said I was a pauper. You're not? Oh, so what about those times I treated you to meals and had you over to my place for dinner? Mean Fräulein, mind your phrasing. <clears throat> Thou wert blessed with the coveted opportunity to enter the palace of the Imanach Reich and meet with the Kaiser and Kaiserin de Verertelung. Or hast thou conveniently forgotten this magnificent occasion? Oh, yes! The stew and cold cuts your mother made were heavenly. <laughs> I could go for some more of that right now. Lady Magistus, this is not the time for such things. Is that Mondstadt cuisine? I want to try some. I heard Mondstadt has lots of local delicacies, especially meat dishes. Hmm. Then I shall extend to you the honor of meeting the Kaiser and Kaiserin with me on a future occasion. Really? Hey, we should go too! Now that you mention it, it has been a while since I visited a friend's house. I shall gladly oblige. Oh, but shouldn't we bring some sort of gift? Those two are very kind and understanding, so please, don't worry about that. Just bring yourselves. You seriously have to try her mom's cold cut platter. It's a specialty or something. <laughs> anyway, it's simply delightful. Not to interrupt, but perhaps we should start working on the puzzle at hand? Ever since I entered this place, I have found myself most preoccupied with that ornament. Oh, right. Astrologists are able to understand the most complex signs among the stars. And because of this, we are not allowed to show any arrogance. If one believes that astrology grants them unlimited power, they will face banishment by the stars. In the past, I was ignorant enough to think that I understood all fates in the universe. Maybe it was some form of punishment. But I... You should not get confused. If you should become confused one day, not even astrology will be able to help you then. That's what the old hag said. We astrologists can't predict our own fate. But today, those words seem to carry a different meaning. I understand now that... People won't always follow a beacon's guiding light. Even though the way forward may be dark and dangerous, they will still resolutely forge ahead.
fate is called such precisely because it cannot be altered or reversed. Understand the governing laws of the universe and have glimpsed secrets between heaven and earth. Observing it is enough for me. There are no perfect legends and no heroes that can save everyone. Instead of dwelling on my helplessness, what I should do is seize my own destiny. View. Lady Magistus, I believe this is the firmest evidence yet of your immense genius. You truly are the greatest archmage in the history of the Immanachreich. Thank you. Although the Immanachreich really doesn't have that much of a history. Stars like diamonds in the moon like a pearl. This is the most brilliant night sky I've ever beheld. It's beautiful. To call up such a mirage, Mona must have a vast and boundless sea of stars in her heart. Hmm. Oh, I'm just thinking. These must be the things that we aspire to. This night sky is incredibly beautiful. In fact, I might go so far as to say it's even more beautiful than what I usually see in divinations. All the stars are in their rightful place. This is definitely my mirage. Only here can I see extraordinary sights like these. Extraordinary? Why do you say that? You know, the night sky of Tevat is truly marvelous. All the answers in the world seem to have been hidden within. When is my missing son going to be found? Do they love me or not? Will I ever recover? As your stars move across the sky, they record all your life events in their path. And among all the people in the world, a considerable number will see their stars deviate from their path. When your stars are on track, it means you will be healthy, happy, and at peace. Conversely, if your stars go off track, everything will get worse. The starry sky in my divinations would never look as perfect as this. Some stars would lose their way, and others would fall. I wish everyone could be happy and stay on track. To this end, I offer advice and tell the truth. I know it's useless. All fates are already revealed in the night sky, with mine too, just another among them. I can't change anything, even so. Outside of astrology, Outside of the words of truth, I still cling to the wisp of an irrational fantasy. We must all live within the confines of reality, but... Call me presumptuous. But I still believe in miracles. In this vast sea of stars, there are stars for you, for me, for everybody. What are the chances of one star encountering another? Are these encounters not the most wonderful miracles in all of destiny? <laughs> I don't know. But within to that, the stars in the sky will always have a place for us. Even if astrology is resolutely rational, fate remains arbitrary, cruel, but romantic. I think I figured out what those stars are hiding. Now I will seize my own destiny.
There was a transparent bird made of crystal. It was beautiful and fragile and could sing the most beautiful songs. But since mortals couldn't see it, they believed it to be a trick. How could a transparent bird possibly exist, let alone sing? When the bird heard that, it flapped its wings and flew across mountains and seas all the way to the night sky, where it turned into a star. Its brilliance was so dazzling that it illuminated everyone. It allowed all those that could see it to follow its light through the dark night, to sail through the seas under the guidance of the stars. It was born in wisdom, but trapped in ignorance. It has never voiced a complaint, for this is its destiny. Guiding people to see their destinies is the very meaning of its existence. We're back here again! So, are we completely out of the mirage? How strange. My mirage didn't contain any hints on the Tui or the machine. Does that mean they had nothing to do with these mirages after all? Or perhaps these mirages are a mere consequence and not part of a process at all? Um, Paimon's lost! I mean, these mirages were not steps towards solving the mystery, but rather a direct effect of whatever's going on. Someone did something to bring the mirages into being. As they were just passive side products, it was natural that they couldn't provide us with any useful information. In other words, those mirages were only about ourselves. Hmm. Pure materializations of ourselves. Interesting. <laughs> Everyone, maybe we should go back to where this whole thing began. During our first day on the island, the Traveler and I checked out the Fatui camp together. We found a strange machine there, as well as some disoriented Fatui. The researcher who spoke to us claimed that the machine was just a Fatui industrial invention. He even promised to not disturb us. Right, right! And the Cappy Cap guy looked half asleep the entire time! He kept talking nonsense! I wonder, is it possible that madness and mirages are two different outcomes of the machine's influence? If so, everything can be traced back to that damaged machine. Except for the difference in how it affects people. This, I believe, is caused by differences between the affected people themselves. Oh. When you put it that way, it is indeed difficult to distinguish dreams and hallucination. So what you're saying is, the device affected us differently because we are different from the Fatui. Yes. And according to our observations over these past few days, I think the difference is that we all have stronger willpower. Yeah, I can get behind that. People with strong willpower will hallucinate instead of falling into madness. But those who break too easily can't maintain a stable mirage. In other words, we should go back to the Fatui camp and destroy that machine right away! No. It should be repaired rather than destroyed. What Main Fräulein means is that rashly destroying a machine we do not understand may lead to more serious consequences. Right. It pays to be cautious. If my guess is correct, that machine is capable of influencing the human brain. So we'd better tread carefully. So let's go now! There's no time to waste! <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's gone crazy. Everyone should get out of here. Well, they'll never wake up. 
But I was right, my precious. <laughs> you are invincible. <laughs> precious? What's his precious? A miracle machine. Definitely not impossible. I think he's referring to that machine. What a drunkard. Hmm. Oh, goodness. The smell of alcohol. Maid Fräulein, please allow me to fan the fumes away with my wings. Oh, excellent. Please fan them away for me, too. Certainly. I've checked the surroundings, but there's no one else here. Isn't that strange? The Fatui is a big organization, but he's the only one left at this camp. What's more, we didn't even see him the last time we were here. Even the larger gentleman from the first time is missing. I think they must be hiding somewhere. As for why they may be hiding, I'm afraid we'll have to ask him. But he's as drunk as Tone Deaf Bard! <sighs> Should we wait for him to sober up? Cleanse him with the Holy Spring of Punishment. Mean Fräulein means to splash him with water. Ooh, sounds like a good idea. Let's try. Hey, he opened his eyes. Uh, huh? Hey, are you one of the Fatui? Can you tell us what happened here and what that machine is for? <laughs> ha! Fatui! Uh, those blockheads from the administration will regret it now! <laughs> That's what you get for rejecting my research and forcing me to... Forcing me to... To conduct my research on this deserted island. <laughs> my precious! My precious! <laughs> Why is he crying? Looks like he has a lot of pent-up emotions. You mocked me! And my precious invention. You... You don't know anything about the future. Only my invention can help us conquer the world! <laughs> idiots! Such idiots! <laughs> Ow! Don't hit me! I won't blow up the lab again. I'm... I'm sorry. I didn't mean to... This man's gone insane. There's no way we can communicate with him. He wasn't like this when we first met him. It looks like the effects have grown worse, to the point of driving him mad. <laughs> My manuscript. My manuscript. Only that can... can save... save... <laughs> Manuscript? Where is it? Don't yell at me! Don't yell at me! Official, don't yell at him! <laughs> then I'll... Let me try. A uh, kind sir, look at me. Now, tell me, where did you hide your manuscript? <laughs> no! No, don't force me to write a report! <laughs> uh. He's completely lost in his own imagination. Allow me. Hmm. Please excuse me. <laughs> oh! My butt! <sighs> my brain is finally starting to work again. It's... It's not a mushy mess anymore. Can you tell me where you put the manuscript? The manuscript. The manuscript is in the crack over there. Oh, finally! Otherwise, I was gonna have to blast some of my loudest rock and roll in his ears. Kazuha hesitated for a long time before making a move. He's so nice! Everyone, let's search the stone cracks nearby for the manuscript.
Congratulations. We found the key to solving the problem. Let me see. Just as I thought. This machinery, named cognitive mimicry, is capable of altering the state of people's brains. It was invented by the researcher we met earlier. His name is Persikov. According to the manuscript, the Fatui officials did not support Persikov's research. They believed he had taken the wrong path, but Persikov insisted on putting his machine to use. In order to achieve that, he disassembled the machine and used his connections to transport the parts to this deserted island. How did they find this island? <sighs> the Fatui's intelligence network is not to be underestimated. Persikov was dead set on carrying out his experiments on this island. Most of his subjects were junior Fatui soldiers who all signed a waiver beforehand. It looks like they really thought this machine would benefit the Fatui. How does the machine work? That's most likely top secret. The manuscript didn't reveal any details, but Persikov did mention that the machine was modeled after the power of a god. Does that mean... There's a god connected to these dreamlike mirages, and the Fatui found a way to research it? Clearly. Otherwise, they wouldn't have been able to reproduce the god's power. Anyway, Persikov's experiment did not go as planned. The machine broke down just days after it was activated. They tried to fix it, but... The technologically illiterate Fatui soldiers completely ruined the machine. Even its most important component of all, the crystalline cores, got ejected and disappeared. A testament to the importance of maintenance in all aspects of life. I believe we can all learn something from this. Persikov may be a mad scientist, but he didn't want to see his subordinates suffer. Besides, if he didn't solve the problem, he would end up going insane as well. As a last resort, Persikov went out on his own to look for the cores. But he was just a sickly researcher, unfit for the task. He had to give up. Then, Persikov went searching for the soldiers who had gone mad and strayed from the group, and took them to a hidden cave. I think that was where they were at the day we arrived on this island. Persikov was taking a strong Fatui soldier somewhere. Yes, it took Persikov all of his strength to get all the missing soldiers into the cave. He tried to snap them out of it with music and poetry, but nothing worked. We came here once, but there was no one around. Come to think of it, that must have been the day Persikov was busy gathering the soldiers into the cave. There's good news and bad news written on the last few pages. The good news is, Persikov managed to figure out the location of the crystalline cores by piecing together the snippets of information he could get from the delirious soldiers. The bad news is, Persikov failed to revive them and eventually succumbed to the device's influence himself. <sighs> It appears that the responsibility for this issue now falls to my retainers and I. There's a map in the manuscript. The marking should indicate the locations of the crystalline cores. We've got no choice but to find the crystalline cores now! 